This is a demonstration of amphoteric metal ions. There's only a few metals that, when they become ions, exhibit amphoteric properties, the ability to act as uh, an acid or a base or be affected by an acid and or a base. And they include lead plus 2, aluminum plus 3, chromium plus 3, and zinc plus 2. And what they do is because they're so small and their electron density is so great, what they tend to do is they tend to draw in electrons and make complex ions. Before we get started, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. I'm going to take some aluminum nitrate. And this chemical, I'm essentially making some free aluminum ions. So I'm going to take some aluminum nitrate and dissolve it first in this um, beaker. So I'm going to drop in aluminum nitrate. As you know, if the solubility of nitrates are very high, nitrates, you're stretching a negative 1 over uh, 4 atoms. So this is going to dissolve very readily. Let's get a little bit more to increase the concentration. All right, and as you can see, it's dissolving very readily, as most nitrates do. Okay, and it's still doing its thing, and metal, st little stirring, magnetic stirring rod is stirring away. Now, what we're hap what's happening here, and let me show you, is what I have is I have aluminum nitrate, and in water, it breaks apart into aluminum plus three, and of course, the nitrate ion, which is the spectator ion here. Now, what happens is because this ion, like most amphoteric ions, is so small, it draws in six waters, they're so attracted to it, so the aluminum ion draws in six waters, and it becomes something called a Lewis acid because it draws in the electron pair somewhat into uh, very close to the ion. And what it does is it causes an electron drift from the hydrogen to the oxygen, and what can happen is H's can be sloughed off. And therefore, this is a, um, an acidic solution now. But because we have six waters who are now surrounding it, what we would say an octahedral complex. Why? Well, six waters will find what we would say a um, very stable octahedral position here. So what we have is a complex. We have aluminum with six waters, uh, water molecules surrounding it, and the whole complex is still plus three because we have a plus three and six neutral molecules. Now, what I'm going to do from this position is I'm going to add some hydroxides. And a hydroxide will be able to, a strong base anyway, this hydroxide will pull an H off one of the waters that where the electrons are being a little bit electron deficient because of the drift, because these electron pairs in between the H and the O is drawn to the aluminum. So a base can yank off these H's one by one, and that's what's happening. So this aluminum water complex loses an H. Notice it becomes aluminum H2O5. It was H2O6 and makes a hydroxide. And notice the charge goes to plus two. So by adding a base, I'm yanking an H away from the water. And now it becomes OH. And as I add some more base, it becomes OH2. Notice the charge goes from plus two to plus one because we have two hydroxides now as I yank what? The H is away from these hydrogens that are susceptible because of the drift of electrons between the O and the H. Now, so as I pull H's off, we go from six water surrounding to five in a hydroxide. We do it some more. We have four and two hydroxides, and we do it one more, and we become three hydroxides and three waters. Now, there's something special that happens here. Look at the charge. It goes from plus three to plus two to plus one. And then one more, it goes to zero. And this is special. When this complex goes to zero, water cannot dissolve it anymore. And it's a solid. It's a precipitate. So as I add base to this, we should see a precipitate occurring. We'll stop there and let's do it. Okay, so let's drop some base. And watch as we pull the H's away from the water molecules surrounding it, we should get, and I'm using a pretty strong solution here, and you can see that I've got some clouding going on, so though I strong base yanked enough of guess of those H's, and I've created a precipitate. Okay, so there is a cloudy precipitate, and that precipitate, again, is this complex. It's zero. We pulled off three of these. Now, why is it zero, and why is it a precipitate? Because water has nothing to attract it. 
when it was charged along the way, it dissolved because water could attract it and break it down into particles. But now, water can't do anything with this. It's no charge, so it's a precipitate. Now, it's a weak base, it's an insoluble base, but with a strong acid, like magnesium hydroxide, which is usually insoluble, okay, so with a strong acid, I could try to dissolve this. All right, I should be able to add some acid. As you can see, it should dissolve it. Now, why did it get dissolved? We're getting a little clearer. Well, because very simply, from the zero from this precipitate here, adding H pluses, I'm able to what? Reprotonate those water molecules and now make it into a charged compound. And once it's charged, the water can attract it and dissolve it. All right, so I'm going going back that way. But that's still not what proves amphoteric properties, because most things that are hydroxides, whether they're insoluble or not, are going to be affected by a strong acid. Okay? So let's add some more base and let's recreate the scenario where I'm going to have some uh, zero charged. Okay, now I had some acid probably left over. Okay. All right. Not enough. Added too much acid. And I'm still getting there. All right, there I'm back. Now, where do we talk about why is it amphoteric? Here we go, party people. Why is it amphoteric? Well, when I have my soluble precipitate right here, insoluble precipitate, here's the cool thing. If I add more hydroxides, I could yank off another H off of my complex ion and make it what? Negative 1. By pulling one more, those H2O3, this becomes H2O2. And by yanking one more what? H off, I make what? Four hydroxides. And where it was once zero is now negative 1. So I can add more what? I can add more base to this to make it dissolve. And that's where it's amphoteric. It can act, be affected by what? A base, right? If this is pulling off an H, it's acting as an acid here. Right? This one's great. This one is doing what? Donating a proton to the hydroxide and acting as an acid. So this can act as an acid in, in the presence of the hydroxide. It can act as a base, right, in the presence of an H plus. This is what makes it amphoteric. So if you can take this soluble insoluble compound and add more base to dissolve it, then you have an amphoteric ion. Most things will go back with acids. They will, but going forward. So we're going to add more base to dissolve it. That's what makes it amphoteric. So here it comes. So let's add some more base and see if we can drive this amphoteric ion to a negative one charge. And there it is. Amazing. We can make it what? Add some base and make it cloudy. And we can add some base and then dissolve it again because it's amphoteric. Again, why does that work? Because we can what? Make it drive it. This can act as an acid and accept a proton, or it's a, a donate a proton and become negative one and dissolve. Or it can act as a base, right? And accept a proton and get charged to a plus one. So it can go both ways. Act as an acid by what? Accepting protons and becoming plus one. Or it act as a base and give uh, act as an acid and give off H's and become negative one. That's what makes it amphoteric.